All right, welcome back. Before we get started today, if you hear any meows or pleads for milk or food, that is the newest member of our family, the little one here in this picture. Her name is Rosa, and we picked her up on the side of the road about a week ago, been dealing with all the medical issues with that. So if you hear anything, that's why. But what we're going to be working on today is we're going to be working on blend shapes and calling methods. We're going to start with calling methods. It isn't too complicated, but real quick, we are going to have to create a couple scripts. So I'm going to create a new folder here, and we're just going to call this folder code. And within this folder, we're going to go ahead and create two new scripts, and they're just going to be called test method. One's going to be C sharp, one's going to be Godot script. All right. I'm not going to go into a full breakdown on these. All I'm going to do is just one method for each one. And all that's going to have is visible equals not visible. All this is going to do is take whatever the current visibility of this mesh is and then invert it and make that the current visibility of this mesh. This is just going to toggle whether something is visible or not. And we're going to use this for testing and make sure to extend node 3D. And we're just going to go ahead and real quick do that on the C sharp side as well. And I had to rename the name just because the name of the class can't be the same as the name of the method in C sharp. But regardless, now we've got that. We've got new test method and it just toggles the visibility. So if we go back over here, we're going to real quick just make a little cube. We can set this as to whatever. Set it as a new mesh and we'll set the standard and we'll set emission to some bright color. Nothing too crazy. Okay. And let's put this above the player so that that way we can just see it for testing purposes. And we're going to disable it. So if we go over to animation player, we're going to set this on an animation that is constantly playing in the upper body, but not in the lower body. So if we toggle this real quick. All right. Had a little hiccup there. Had to exit the scene and come back. But now we've got the proper animation player playing. If we go over and look around, we can go ahead and make sure that this is looping. And let's just add a track. Got a bunch of different options here. Usually, if you're going to want to change any of these options, it is better to go over here and create a key. So you can create a new key on any sort of function or variable. And you can change these things on the fly using whatever animation player you have open. But in this case, for specifically calling method, it is easier just to go ahead and hit add tract and call method. And then you select the object that you want to call the method on. In this case, it's going to be the mesh instance 3D. And if we scroll down here to the bottom, we now have this line right here. Let's go ahead and disable the animation tree. So we're just looking at the animation in the animation player. So we can see right here as he starts to turn his head, let's go ahead and create a new key. And then you'll get all of these different options. In this case, our script is not actually applied, so that is not there. But you can see we have every function that is available on any object at when it just inherits from Mesh Instance 3D. So we have things like removing child, getting physics process, all sorts of things. But we're going to close that out and we're going to go ahead and implement the script real quick. And we're just going to do the test method CS. And if we go right here and hit insert key, if we go up to the top, you can now see the new test method. An important thing to note is that calling methods won't typically work in the inspector. We do actually have to hit play for this. So we're going to make it so that when he turns back this way, we're just going to call that method again. And remember, it turns it on or off each time. It just toggles the visibility. So it should toggle back and forth. So if we hit the animation tree here, the filters are not including that function. So you see how the mesh instance 3D here is actually outside of the tree it is not a part of the skeleton but because an animation is referencing that for a method call we can now toggle whether the mask allows that or not so in this case we do want the ability for the upper body to control that because the animation for looking around is in that upper body so if we go ahead and toggle that and then we hit play what we should see is it turning on and off as he looks back and forth and just like that it works just fine So that's basically how you call method functions from within animation. This can be extremely useful. I use this personally for any time the enemy is attacking or the player is attacking to call the method to enable or disable the collision. You also can do it with footsteps. Just always be careful that you make sure your filters are set up. I cannot tell you how much time I've spent trying to figure out why my upper body was not calling animation events when it was just the filter disabling it. So we have that functional. Let's go ahead and go over blend shapes. So 
blend shapes are an incredibly powerful part of animation and I use it to great effect in Hermit. First, we're gonna have to hop over to Blender. Blend shapes, basically what they are is repositioning of the vertices in relative space to their original position. Real quick, we're just gonna reset the pose of the skeleton. We don't need this to be animated for now. And we're gonna select the mesh and we're gonna hide that skeleton to make things easier. And if you come down here to the three little dots, you're gonna see a couple options here. First, vertex groups. And this is how you actually bind the mesh to the skeleton. But down below it, you also have shape keys. So the important thing to remember with shape keys is you always have to have a basis. So you have to create one and then create another one. So the basis will never change. That is like the frame of reference for the original. So if we set the key one, let's just call it test shape one. A couple important things when, do, when messing with this in Blender, you do have to go ahead and set the value up the first time. So if you set the value to zero, when you make changes, it won't actually reflect against the test shape. And because you have the test shape selected, I don't think it'll even allow the changes to occur. But what you do is set the value to one, and then when you edit it or sculpt it or what have you, and for in this case, we're just gonna hit sculpt, and we're gonna use the inflation brush, and we're just gonna make the biceps larger, give them a little bit of muscles. So if we go back to object mode, and we slide that value, you now see the mesh deforms. And you can actually do this in the other direction. So if you put the minimum to negative one, you can shrink it down and now he has deflated biceps. So as a result, you can use this to do very complex interactions with the character, not just with changing the body's shape, but also if you wanted to counteract something. For example, if the knee bends too far and the mesh doesn't look right, you can then create a blend shape that occurs just when the knee is bending and accounts for that. A lot of very high-end AAA games will do this in order to counteract the issues with bone-based animation. For now, we're just gonna set this to one. We're gonna set the minimum value to zero and the maximum value to one. And if we go to object mode, make sure to set the the skeleton back to pose mode, re-enable its visibility. And we're just gonna select all this and we're gonna export this as we normally would and make sure to always use your preset. All right, and we're back in Godot. It should just import automatically. There shouldn't be any issues, but if we go back into Animation Player, okay, so look around, did disable the looping. Sometimes it does this, you just have to be careful about that. So if you go down to the character body mesh, you now see another tab on the character mesh. Before it was just skeleton and surface material override. Now we have blend shapes. And so we can manipulate this and change it to whatever we like. Now, Godot does the default to negative one to one, but if you are manipulating it via code, you can actually go farther than this. And maybe we'll go over that in another episode. We can just leave this as is, or we can also manipulate it via an animation player. An interesting quirk, when I did testing for this video, I found that the blend shape track just simply did not work for me in playing or in editing. So instead, I found a workaround. If you select the mesh and you go up to the key option, you can go ahead and create a new key track for this property. So I just set it to Bezier Curves. I disable Create Reset Tracks and I create a new track. So you can see right here, we have the new track and we have it, it automatically defaults to whatever the value currently is. So we can just set this down to there and let's disable the animation tree again, just to look at the animation. And so when he looks this way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new key and this new key, I'm gonna set the value to one. And if you go down here, you can also see the curves mode so if you manipulate the curves, you can also make things smoother or harsher of a transition. But be aware when it comes to blend shapes, the value here is very extreme. So in this case, value one is all we really need. And you'll notice in the animation, you see how the biceps expand. If we set this up to something extreme like 29, yeah, that's obviously not what we need. All right, so we'll set that back down to one. Now we can go ahead here and create another key. And we'll just duplicate this one. And then in the end, we'll duplicate the first one. That's fine. We're just gonna set this to zero. So if we go back, watch the biceps as they expand and then contract back to the way they were. And to make this a little bit no more noticeable, we can also set the value to negative one default on both ends. So it starts out as very deflated and then expands and then deflates again. Now this is just for testing but you can go ahead and throw it into the animation player and watch it there as well. Here in the animation player, once again, it's not visible. And that's because we also have to set up the filtering for that. So you can see how the blend shapes here are separated out by themselves. And if we select that right there, you can notice now once again, it is expanding and contracting. Because remember that upper body animation is handling the look around animation. 
And if we hit wave, it'll just blend straight into that. And because it is blended exactly like everything else in the transitions, it blends perfectly just like the animation. All right, so that's going to be it. It's going to be a little bit of a shorter video today. We are going to go into a little bit more detail having to do with actually setting up a character controller and passing information to the animation tree via code. And I think that I will go over how to edit blend shapes via code then. But until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day and we'll see you all back next week for a very basic character controller.